This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Well, as the first impact after the pay-per-view starts, you've got Jeremy Borash pinned up against the wall looking for Joe. Poor JB. JB, man. He I takes know this, a beating. Yeah, well, he takes a beating. And, like, this has to – I know there's a little bit of a sidebar, but he has to be one of the true unsung heroes of pro wrestling in the last 20 years, no? Like, what has he contributed yes. to the business, in your opinion? He's done incredible work for the business, uh, whether it be – you know, him announcing, uh, commentating. Uh, he does a lot of the back behind the scenes stuff. Uh, he, he films a lot of our pre-tapes, especially off-site. Um, he does a lot of the editing. He, he is our most valuable player of TNA, at least at that particular time. I totally agree with you there. And he's contributed so much even after TNA and after Impact. And I think that's what makes him a special talent. So, Start the build here to match number three. You interrupt Bobby Roode and Tracy Brooks, who are trying to make Eric Young an offer. We've talked a little bit about what the Cowboy, James Storm, and Bobby Roode had to bring to the table here. But in 2007, did you know that Bobby Roode was someone that could potentially carry a company someday? Yes, I did. I knew right away. He reminded me a lot of Arn Anderson, his mannerisms, the way he carried himself. I knew he was going to be a huge star from the beginning. Do you see any comparisons between he and Triple H, someone else you know very well? Because that was a comparison I always heard over the years. Physically, they kind of look a little bit alike. But right. there's something about the presence and style. I always found there were some parallels there. Yeah, they are identical in a lot of ways. They move the same way. Um, you know, they, they're built almost the same way. Uh, I think that they, they have a lot of um, things in common with each other, without a doubt. You're right. I think he's a great mind, and, and I'd like to see more out of Bobby Roode, Robert Roode, yes, whatever you want to call him uh, in WWE, though I do enjoy the dirty dogs up there on the WWE main roster. So you announce you want one more match against Joe. Joe comes out, said that you were the one who insisted that it be the final match between the two. He's ready to move on to Abyss and the NWA championship. You go nuts, and you put the ankle lock on Don West. <laughs> now... Our friend Don West, unfortunately, has gone through some health troubles over the last year or so, and we wish him nothing but the best here on the Kurt Angle show. What type of guy is Don West, and what the hell did he do wrong to you here to deserve that? <laughs> well, Don was the first guy I could get my hands on, so I had to take my first <laughs> time on him. But Don's a great guy. He was a great commentator. Uh, I loved him. He, he was one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Uh, would do anything for you. Uh, would do any favor you needed be, to be done. Uh, Don was a, a go-to guy. Uh, he wasn't just an announcer. He was uh, the guy that if you needed something, he would get it for you. I broadcast all the time on the Indies. Obviously, I'm a wrestling broadcaster, so I study a lot of these play-by-play -play guys. I study a lot of color guys because I think her, the thing with wrestling commentary is like, it, it's not just the pro sports thing where you have to say what's happening. You also have to get stories over and I always thought Don West was so good at accentuating characters and making the combatants feel like they're larger than life. How do you feel going back through the years and listening to him that he helped do that for other talent? Yeah, he was really good at that. That was his job. You know, he explained the characters, um, you know, told you um, he, he told a good story about each character, each wrestler. And, you know, him and Don West had great chemistry together. And, uh, you know, what he was able to do was incredible. Yeah, Mike Tanay and Don West are probably one of the more underrated announced teams, I feel yeah, like, you're right. in Wrestling Pantheon. So then I have to ask, after you throw him in the ankle lock, uh, does he tell you afterwards, like, shoot, brother, that, that really hurt? Or is there anything uh, like that? I, I told him beforehand I'd take care of him. I told him I okay. wouldn't be stiff. <laughs> I, I hope that was certainly the case. So later on the show you give slick johnson the ankle lock because that's just your gimmick at this point you're just throwing just everyone in ankle locks um you pull socal val in the ring step on her hair you're a menace at this point yes i am <laughs> jim Cornette comes out he tells you how joe had a clause in the turning point contract that there'd be no rematch in Cornette can't get around it but he'll make a tag match next week for you to get in the ring with now i, I want to backtrack here for a quick second you are just fiery rage at this point this is not long after you're doing the wrestling machine character in ecw 
it's a very intense hurt angle. Was that easier for you to portray in the ring when you could turn up that intensity or did that take a little extra effort from you? No, it was easier for me. Um, you know, when I was playing the entertaining uh, nerd, uh, you know, heel in WWE, it was a lot more work, you know, because I had to be somebody I wasn't. But for me, the wrestling machine was more me than any other character I played. So I, I was really comfortable doing it. I feel strongly that saving money is important. You know, if it's not something we worry about now, boy, we are really going to worry about it later. And I want to help you get out of debt faster and do it with cheaper monthly payments. I'm talking to you. If you're in a 30 year loan, now is the time to take years off of your loan. We're routinely helping our listeners cut five, 10, even 15 years off their loan. And you can do this without perfect credit with no money out of pocket. You've just got to start at SaveWithConrad.com. Where does this idea stem from to turn you heel? Because you come in not long before this as the biggest free agent TNA has ever brought in. You are instantly a baby face just by showing up. So where does the idea to come heel turn uh, to turn heel come from? Well, I was more comfortable as a heel. I was a heel okay. for most of my career in WWE. And TNA, we, we came to an agreement when I signed with the company that what I would do is make the wrestlers, make baby faces. So in order to make baby faces, you have to be a great heel. And that was my job. That's what I signed with the company to do. And that's what I did. Why was that important to you to make baby faces? Uh, I wanted to make stars in TNA like WWE does. And I thought that, you know, as a heel, uh, your job is to make the baby faces look as good as you possibly can. And that was, a, that is what I was best at. So as a wrestler, is there some sort of instant gratification when you're a heel, you see a baby face get over? Does that like make you feel like proud dad energy kind of thing? <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah. When you know they're getting over and, and you're part of the reason why it makes you feel really good. But how tough is it when you have a crowd that, and, and keep in mind, this is a more casual crowd there, Universal Studios. They know Kurt Angle. He's the big star. The crowd wants to cheer you. So how difficult is it when you have to go out there and just be a jerk to them? <laughs> it's really hard. Uh, you know, the crowd, you know, they like you. And, and you know, when I started in pro wrestling, um, I was a heel and fans hated my guts. They, they I was really um, annoying and uh, after a couple of years, they started to appreciate my heel character. And what I had to do is reinvent my heat. So I had to change my heat and uh, think of different ways of getting heat so the fans would continue to hate me. Because I could have turned babyface easily, but I didn't want to. I wanted to continue to be a heel. So I had to change my heat and, uh, you know, reinvent it. And a good example is what I did with Joe. Um, I attacked the people closest to him because he mm -hmm. wanted me to wrestle me. And that's a heel move. But that's so weird, though, what you just said, that Joe wouldn't agree to wrestle you because Joe well, is the baby I did face say it was, was going to be our last match, our second match. I told Joe that. There you go. And did Joe you? said, hey, you said it was our last match. Now you want to wrestle again. So I went back on my promise, mm -hmm. which is another heel move. <laughs> but but doesn't it and this is just me playing devil's advocate here from a, a book a traditional booking standpoint doesn't it feel a little weird when a baby face turns down a fight because shouldn't it be the baby face is always like i'm willing to be a fighting champion kind of thing yes it is but i think joe was focused on the world title and mm -hmm. that's where he wanted to go he don't want to wrestle Kurt anymore he wanted the world title so is it a baby face move to turn down a match no but if you if you want to wrestle for the world title and that's where you're headed I think it's a good baby face move. So you're just trying to be a pain in the ass at that point to get a third <laughs> match out of him. Got it. Okay. Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.